Translation. Thereafter, the power of protection was generated from the arms of that gigantic Virat form. In relation to such power, the Kshatriyas also came into existence by following the Kshatriya principles of protecting society from the disturbance of thieves and miscreants. Hmm. I'll read it again. Thereafter, the power of protection was generated from the arms of the gigant, gigant, gigantic Virat form. In relation to, to such power, the Kshatriyas also came into existence by following the Kshatriya principles of protecting society from the disturbance of thieves and miscreants. Purport. As the Brahmanas are recognized by their particular qualification towards inclinations, towards the transcendental knowledge of Vedic wisdom, so also the Kshatriyas are recognized by the power to protect society from the disturbing elements of thieves and miscreants. The word Anuvrata is significant. A person who follows the Kshatriya principles by protecting society from thieves and miscreants is called a Kshatriya, not the one who is simply born a Kshatriya. The conception of the caste system is always based on quality and not on the qualification of birth. Birth is an extraneous consideration. It is not the main feature of the orders and divisions. In Bhagavad Gita 18.41-44, through 44, the qualifications of the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Sudras are specifically mentioned and it is understood that all such qualifications are needed before one can be designated as belonging to a particular group. Lord Vishnu is always mentioned as the Purusha in, Purusha in all Vedic scriptures. Sometimes the living entities are mentioned as Purushas, although they are essentially Purusha Shakti, Parashakti or Para Prakriti, the superior energy of the Purusha. Illusion by the external potency of the Purusha, the Lord, the living entities falsely think themselves as Purusha, although they actually have no qualifications. The Lord has the power to protect. Of these three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwar, the first has the power to create, the second has the power to protect, and the third has the power to destroy. The word Purusha is significant in this verse because the Kshatriyas are expected to represent the Purusha Lord in giving protection to the Prajas, or all those who are born in the land and born in the land and water. Protection is therefore meant for both man and animals. In modern society, the Prajas are not protected from the hands of thieves and miscreants. The modern democratic state, which has no Kshatriyas, is the government of Vaishyas and Sudras, and not of Brahmins and Kshatriyas, as formerly. Maharaj Yudhisthira and his grandson, Maharaj Parikshit, were typical Kshatriya kings, for they gave protection to all men and animals. When the personification of Kali attempted to kill a cow, Maharaj Parikshit at once prepared himself to kill the Mistrians and the personification of Kali was banished from the kingdom. This is a sign of Purusha, or the representative of Lord Vishnu. According to Vedic civilization, a qualified Kshatriya Marnak is given the respect of the Lord because he represents the Lord by giving protection to the Prajas. Modern elected presidents cannot even give protection from thief cases and therefore, one has to take protection from the insurance company. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> the problems of modern human society are due to a lack of qualified brahmanas and kshatriyas, and the over-influence of the Vaishnavas and Sudras by so-called general franchise. Om Gyan Timiran Dasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Thus, my Sri Gurave Maha, Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapti Tamyena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swampadanti Kam Dama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasdaya Bhutale 
Shivakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharini Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya Tezatarine Panchakalpa Taru Vishya Kripa Sindhu Vebacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sivasiddhi Gaur Bhaktavindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare In the Bhagavad Gita it's mentioned Chaturvarna Manasrisna Guna Karma Vibhaga Saha So Krishna speaks this verse uh, the four ver- the four varnas, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Sudra, along with the four ashramas, Brahmachari, Grihastha, Vanaprasth, and Sanyas, Krishna said were created by me alone. He is the creator of this system. And this is the perfect social and spiritual development, which is the foundation for both categories which means that one must be situated in a particular ashram and one must work according to one's nature. That is perfect society. <laughs> in other words, whether you're a brahmachari or a grihastha, whatever, ash, whatever varna you're in, you work according to that varna and you situate yourself accordingly. Either brahmachari, I mean, brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Sudra. And that way, society develops nicely. So Prabhupada wanted to establish this Vanashram system when he first began the Hare Krishna movement. Back in the early part of the, the, well, 1960s. But after some time inspecting and seeing what was available, he thought it's impossible. Society is too topsy-turvy. People are not working according to their natures and there's no spiritual education anywhere. And as he mentions here, the governments, especially today, are governed by Vaishyas and Sudras, not Kshatriyas, which are actually the rulers in society. Uh, but in other lectures, Prabhupada has also said that's not even that good. It's lower than sutras. Tenth class, fifth class men. Persons who have, who only use their position to exploit others or for their own aggrandizement. They're not interested so much in the welfare of the society, which is the foundation for the Kshatriya's motivation. The Kshatriya, or the king, According to Vedic culture, and we see that with kings like Yudhisthira Maharaj and Parikshit Maharaj, Prithu Maharaj, and other great kings, their main concern was the welfare of the citizens. And they were always concerned if the citizens were getting everything they needed to live happily and practicing their spiritual life properly. And therefore, uh, they uh, enacted rules and, and programs to facilitate people's needs in life. And at the same time, they would also collect taxes in order to maintain the government and to give protection to the citizens. That's ideal government. That's why the kings were called Rajarsis, or Rajarisi, which means they were leaders, but they were guided by and also aware of religious principles. Well, where do we see that today? I mean, there was one very pious and very Krishna conscious king, his name was Devendra, and he was the king of, uh, what was that country? Hmm, right next to India. Hmm. Can't think of that country. What's that country next to India? Huh? Nepal. Nepal. Yeah, Nepal. The Nepalese are actually a Kshatriya country. They're all born Kshatriyas. 
And the king of that country name was Devendra, and he was Krishna conscious. And he ruled, and of course, he's no longer there. I think he left that position. I mean, I think he died maybe almost 20 years ago. But we had, that was the last Krishna conscious king in the world, <laughs> or even someone who was pious. Now, what do we have? We, we don't have Kshatriyas, we don't even have Vaishyas, we don't even have Sudras. We have, we have Malachas and Yavanas, or even those who are lower. All they want to do is to control the citizens to, so they can maximize the power that they have and get as much money, position, power, prestige, and influence in their position. And they make policy based on economic development, and not for the welfare of people. So we live in a very dysfunctional society. Therefore, Prabhupada writes in this purport, there's no Kshatriyas today. <laughs> because the word Kshatriya, Kshat means to protect, and Triya means from harm. That's the actual, the etymological meaning of the word. Those who are in the position to give protection from, as it mentions here, disturbances caused by thieves and miscreants. <laughs> and when, the, when thieves and miscreants are bound in society and they're not checked, just like it was said that even not so long ago, Prabhupada was talking yesterday in uh, Kashmir, or even now in certain Islamic countries, if a person is a thief, and they're proven to be to be a thief, they cut their hands off. That's the punishment for thievery, they cut your hand off. Prabhupada said that was the rule in Kashmir for, for many years. And uh, now the government don't, doesn't punish the thieves, they can't even catch the thieves. Why? Because they're thieves themselves. <laughs> it's like, it's more bigger thieves, that's all. And so, yes, you, Prabhupada was talking yesterday, he said, you can't even walk the streets at night. He said, in, in most big cities, because it's dangerous. There's thieves and dacoits and persons who will attack people and take their money, attack ladies and molest them. It's a very, you know, we find that in many big cities around the world. But Prabhupada was saying that when, in India, even today in some villages, they go out freely at any, at any time in the night and can walk around without any fear of any danger. But that is not, this is, that is not the, the rule nowadays. It's, it's, I was living in Chicago for years, and I was, you know, you couldn't go out after a certain time, and there's certain sections in Chicago you can't even go in during the daytime, but to speak about in the nighttime. If you go down there during the daytime and you are a certain origin, nationality, you may not come out alive. <laughs> they kill you. It's, it's that dangerous. And the police can't do anything. There are, there are about 500, and this was a statistic about 20 years ago, street gangs throughout America. 500 street, and they're highly armed with not only weapons, but automatic rifles also. <laughs> and they have wars amongst themselves. If the police come in, they also shoot at the police. <laughs> this is, uh, and this goes on. And so there's, this is, uh, they, they can't control this because there's no Kshatriyas. When Maharaj Pariksit was ruling the world, when he heard from one area, when he was traveling around the world, he came across a, a low-grass man beating the legs of a cow and a bull and causing distress to these animals. He immediately took out his sword and was about to punish him. And that was the personality of Kali who came to introduce the age that we live in. And Kali pleaded for his life and Maharaj was merciful and gave him his life, but he banished him from his kingdom said, you cannot live anywhere. Kali said, where can I go? Everywhere is your kingdom. He said, well, 
You go where the four regulative principles are being broken, illicit sex, intoxication, meeting, and gambling. But then Kali said, there's nowhere in that kingdom where, you, where these things are being broken. <laughs> where do I go? And then Maharaj said, wherever there's the hoarding of gold, he said. And he, then Kali left. Because wherever the hoarding of gold, sinful activities develops. Like even today, now you can't get gold. It's all hoarded. And uh, there's also big signs on stores, we buy gold here. <laughs> They're trying to collect all the gold because they know this paper money is useless. Precious metals is actually real wealth, particularly gold, diamonds, uh, emeralds, and lapis lazuli. These are the more precious stones. But <clears throat> Persons like Maharaj Pariksha don't exist anymore today. It's all dacoits. And they make policies and they always have wars, that's all. And they, they involve the innocent people in the wars, that's all. And even Prabhupada says the Kshatriyas years ago, when there was a war between two countries, the king would lead the army in the fight. He would be in the front lines fighting. Papa said, "Now they're they're in the back they're in the back sitting in front of their TV screen watching the Roman war and smoking cigarettes. That's all. <laughs> and they don't, they're cowards, and they call them in because <clears throat> the statement for the president he is considered the chief of the armed forces. That's that's his title." President of the United States is called the Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces. But he sits in his room with his old lady and they just smoke cigarettes and talk about, you know, how the war is going on. And all the innocent soldiers are dying in the front lines. That's today's Kshatriya. So we live in a very dysfunctional society. But Prabhupada, now Prabhupada could see we couldn't do anything with the secular world. So he wanted to develop this Vanashram system within the Krishna Conscious Society. And he had plans for that. <clears throat> he said, first we need to educate and train and engage persons in Brahminical activities. So he started a great, uh, 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 the whole process of Krishna Consciousness was to educate people in the scriptures where they could understand the scriptures, apply the scriptures, and teach the scriptures to others. But then he said that was only the beginning. The second part was the Vaishyas and the Sudras. No, I'm sorry, not Vaishyas. What do I say? Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas. He wanted Kshatriyas and Vaishyas to be trained by the Brahmins in our society. You can hear the tape. Prabhupada speaks about this in detail. And the, the tape lecture is March 14th, 1974. Prabhupada gives a very detailed explanation of the Vanashram system, which is Daivi Vanashram. It's not material Vanashram. Daivi Vanashram means you serve the Lord according to your Swadharma, material tendencies, and you practice Krishna consciousness. And you work according like that. Prabhupada said, then, when our society develops like that, we will, we will be able to be spread, we'll spread fast all over the world. We'll have qualified people in all areas of activity, and at the same time, they'll be Krishna conscious. That was Prabhupada's. So, we've successfully developed the Brahminical aspect of it in our society, quite good, but we haven't touched much the Kshatriya and the Vaishyasa. And in order for that to, to develop, or for our society to develop, that needs to be done. So what is the Kshatriya's duty? Two, two, three things the Kshatriya has to do. They manage their managers, temple presidents, managers, yatra leaders, <coughs> and they're also fighters. Prabhupada said if there's some reason, they come out and they fight, and they can protect also. So they're not aggressors, as sometimes people think, well, a military man or is a, an aggressor. No, they're not aggressors. The word Kshatri means to protect and not 
to assault. And uh, that's their service. And they protect the devotees also. This is like in the ashrams. The duty of the temple president is to give protection to each and every devotee in the temple and make sure they get everything they need. Protecting the brahmacharis and making sure they get everything they need. Protecting the ladies and providing whatever they need also. So the third part of that is called welfare. So we use three, three words, protection, organization, welfare. POW, P-O-W, <laughs> POW. Protection, organization, and welfare. That's the job of the Kshatriyas. Protecting the deities, protecting the devotees, protecting the facilities, protecting uh, the buildings, everything, and at the same time giving individual protection according to fulfilling the needs of each devotee so they can do their service nicely. And organization means they, they're expert in managing the affairs of the temple. And they also, as we mentioned, welfare, they provide what everyone needs. <clears throat> That's their duty. Not that they do everything. It's not, a, it's not the job of a leader to do everything, but to facilitate all the needs through his angas or his arms. To inspire, to empower, and to facilitate those who work under him to take responsibility in different areas and at the same time carry out their service. So what, what, what the leader does is he makes sure everybody else works and he makes sure they have everything they need. He's like a father who's giving everything direction. He may do something also, but that's not his main business. His main business is to facilitate everyone else's service. Because uh, if he's doing so many things, he has no time to, to help others. <laughs> and that's the, main, that's the problem. When a leader does everything, then he's, uh, he's not leading anymore. He becomes a, you know, he, a leader has to be a facilitator, see what everyone needs, guide them accordingly, provide their, uh, uh, what we say, the items they need to do their service nicely and to make sure they get everything they need. That is the, that is the job of a, and if someone, some aggressors come to attack, then he's out there fighting against that. <laughs> he's a, he, he knows how to fight. Prabhupada said we have to train our devotees also in the fighting spirit because, especially in Kali Yuga, there are so many Dakites. Our the temple's been attacked so many times. <laughs> I mean, we can't even record how many times our temples have been attacked. Sometimes small, but sometimes really big, like what happened in Lithuania. They came in and ravaged our temple. Look what they did in Bangladesh just recently. There was no Kshatriyas there to protect the temple. They just didn't... They're not prepared, and so they come in and easily, you know, they can make a, they can create a devastation and harm and kill devotees. So Prabhupada wanted that. He, he you could hear it in his lectures, you know, established this Kshatriya Dharma for organization and protection of the temples. It's something we need to do, and it requires education and training at the same time. Therefore, Prabhupada wanted this Van Ashram College as a training ground for education for people in the different varnas, like that. And of course, vaishas also, vaishas, those who know how to handle finance, they're good at investment, they're good at collecting money, they're good at using money, they assist the temple president in the, the techniques and how to use money for the, for the yatra, for the temple. They're also, um, they can also provide all of the food necessary. Of course, when you have a farm community, the Kshatriyas are very much engaged. They can take care of cows. They can also produce agriculture, facilitate all the, what we say, basic needs of all of the devotees. So this is, this is our society as Prabhupada designed it or wanted it to be designed. 
And so when it develops to that level, then our movement will be successful and all the devotees will be happy. <laughs> because if we don't work according to our nature and don't have the support we need in our services, then we, then we don't last in Krishna consciousness. We just go, it's called a re revolving door process. Devotees come, they stay for a little while and they leave. Therefore, training, education, and proper engagement, three things. Train the people and educate them. Educate first, then train, and then engage, like that. When you do those three things, then you'll have devotees that are nicely situated, and the temple, the atra, everything flourishes nicely. And that's the duty of the brahmanas, to do the training themselves. The brahmanas have to do the training, the, the kshatriyas, the temple authorities have to do the management, and the devotees have to carry out the activities. So Prabhupada said we are highly organized. <laughs> highly organized. Because without organization you can't do anything. There was an example given in one book written by one devotee. He was showing that without the kshatriyas, the Brahmins really, you know, they are they can preach, but nothing really develops. They can educate, but they nothing has to do unless you engage people accordingly. And he gave the example: <clears throat> you come up to me and you say, Maharaj, can I have a glass of milk? And I say, All right. You walk down the road there, and you'll see at the end there's a barn. You go in there, and there's a cow. And there's a bucket there, and there you go. There's your milk. So what kind of organization is that? <laughs> you think, oh, I, I just changed my mind. I don't want the milk anymore. <laughs> I have to milk the cow to get the milk, right? <laughs> so, so that's an example. We show that, you know, unless there is these two main facilities, the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas, working together as a team, to facilitate everything else, then everything falls through. You have to have both, like that. And so we designate people according to different needs, but we don't train them in the services, and therefore we just give people different services. But that's the training also has to be there, because when one is trained, and especially when they're trained according to their nature, they can do amazing service and contribute to you know, the development of the service and to the yatra itself. So the kshatriya is a very important part. Therefore, Prabhupada started with the Brahminical side, but he said, we need to develop kshatriyas and vaishyas. We need to train them. Otherwise, we will, our society won't develop properly. We'll be just, we will be good for giving information, but for doing things. <laughs> We won't be able to carry out things so well. Somehow or other it goes on, but <laughs> like that. All right, so it's important to have these kshatriyas. And again, as society starts to deteriorate, there will be a rise in thieves and miscreants. Some of them will come to take advantage of religious organizations. We have to be prepared for such persons who are disturbing elements in the society. And therefore, unless we have this kshatriya arrangement, it's easy for our society to become vulnerable to, you know, attacks and devotees being harmed, deities being broken, you know, temples being smashed. What happened in Bangladesh twice within the last few months is quite horrendous. And it's all due to not having kshatriyas there. If there were kshatriyas there, they would have been able to protect the devotees. Or they could have organized in such a way as at least to, uh, to organize to... Because uh, when, the when these dacoits know that there is... If we attack, we're going to get, you know, we're going to get resistance, they, they won't come. But if they, they think, oh, we'll just walk in and just do anything we want. That's what happens. So, and our society, as it is now, is falling apart. <clears throat> I was just in London. 
I was seeing the deterioration on many levels of the society and it, people are quite worried about where it's going to go. Inflation has doubled and tripled in general, across the board with practically all different services and commodities. Unemployment is high. Nobody wants to work anymore. <laughs> it's just like that, really. So society is going through a real, and this is all around the world now. So this means a rise in criminals. When society starts becoming dysfunctional, a rise in criminals. And so that'll be everywhere. So, um, yeah, so the Prabhupada wanted, he, he could see, he could foresee that this would be the deterioration caused by the age of Kali, therefore we have to have this Vanashram system, like that. All right, so I'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. And we have examples from the scriptures when you have a strong leader in society, we're talking about general society now, and then there is no thieves because they know if there's a strong king, strong uh, law enforcement agency, the punishment is very heavy. So people become fearful like that. Okay, questions, comments from anyone? Yes. Maharaj, uh, thank you very much for uh, letting us know what are the three functions of Kshatriya Pau. And I was thinking, like, can you tell us uh, the, the Brahmana, Vaishya and Shuddha, so I can also... Well, that's mentioned, as Prabhupada mentions in here, in Bhagavad Gita, the qualifications of the Brahmana, Kshatriyas and Vaishyas and Sutras are mentioned. Verses 41 through 44. So, Shiv Brahman's qualifications are mentioned. Uh, what is that? Uh, let's see. Yeah. What's the first word? Samal Dhamma Tatas. Samal Dhamma Tatas. Arjavam jnana vijnana astikam brahma karma subhava jam. Peacefulness, austerity, tolerance, cleanliness, truthfulness, simplicity, knowing the scriptures, speaking the scriptures, following religious principles. These are the qualifications of a brahmana. Kshatriya means heroism in battle, chivalry, um, organization. Yeah. Here we go. This is Bhagavad Gita here. Peacefulness, self-control, austerity, purity, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom, and religiousness. These are the natural qualities by which the Brahmins work. Heroism, power, determination, resourcefulness, courage, courage in battle, generosity, and leadership are the natural qualities of work for the Kshatriyas. Farming, cow protection, business are the natural work for the Vaishnas and for the Sutras. There is labor and service to others. Yeah. He's, there gives mentality for Brahmana and Kshatriya and work for uh, Vaishya and Shuddha. Yeah, it's interesting. It's, that's true. So not the duties of Brahmana and Kshatriya, but just the mentality by which they... Yeah. Well, Prabhupada also says uh, courage in battle. They have to go to battle in some cases, so that's activity. But, yeah, you're right, it's more like qualities. Yeah, so, Brahmins and Kshatriya, the qualities are mentioned, and it says for Kshatriya and Vaishyas, it says work. Yeah. 
And sutras also work. Mm -hmm. So they work under the guidance of the other two leaders, the Kshatriyas and the Brahmas. So you need, mm -hmm. yeah, therefore, just like it is described, that the Brahmins are synonymous with the head, and the Kshatriyas are the arms, the Vaishyas are the belly, and the Sutriyas are the legs. So the body has these different components. Everyone is necessary, but if you lose the legs, you could still, the body is still can be alive, but if you lose the head, it's a dead body. Qualities? Yeah, Prabhupada said the Brahmanas have to know the scriptures and be able to practically apply the knowledge in day to day life. And they have to be able to teach others the same. So the qualities of Brahmanas is Patan, Patan, Yajan, Yajan, Dana, Pratigraha. To know the scriptures to teach the scriptures, to worship the deity, to teach worship of the deity, to give in charity, and to accept charitable gifts. These are the activities of the Brahmanas. Yeah, and so when, when you have all four of these you know, angas working together, then you have a, a society that's progressive materially and spiritually. Mm -hmm. This society emphasizes the kshatriyas, I mean the vices, money, and sudras sense gratification. So, sudras are interested in sense gratification, the vices are interested in, ma in making money. So, you see, everything is motivated. I was just sitting in the airport the, two days ago. I was coming from London here. And people are reading their newspaper. And they hold the newspaper up like this and they read, you know. So I was just noticing the title of the newspaper, Financial Times. And I looked around and I saw at least two or three people, Financial Times, with their face buried in. And I'm thinking, who the hell cares about numbers, you know? It's nothing. But they're absorbed in hearing about the stock markets, about the corporations, trading, and thinking how they can use their own position to increase their wealth. Financial times. So it's, there's nothing about spiritual life. There's nothing about, you know, moral and, re, and, and religious principles. Nothing. And he, yes, uh, Dargarish. Maybe small information only. Uh, backed up. Ivan Lemo, he's from Zagreb. He, he, he was in. A uh, Oman, an Arabian country who is kingdom, and uh, he said there it was. There is uh, only seven prisoners there, only seven in all kingdom. Seven prisoners. Only seven, and from these seven, in four is foreigners. Four is what? Foreigners. Four is not domestic foreigners. Foreigners. Yeah. It's kingdom, and it's very Oman. Heavy. It's very heavy kingdom, you know. If you <laughs> you get a clue, yeah, yeah. The yeah, <laughs> and in Islamic kingdom, if you if you attack a chaste lady, <clears throat> they take you and they take you in public and they cut your head off. <laughs> in some places, in the <laughs> so in the nowadays capital punishment in, in most of the bigger countries is done away with. And Prabhupada said capital punishment is a mercy because if someone's murdered someone, 
they have to suffer that reaction by being killed themselves. And if they give up their life, then they can start their next life without that, that karma. But if they don't, then they're born in their next life and they have to suffer tremendously. And they'll also be killed at one point in that life. Mm -hmm. So capital punishment, Prabhupada said, is, is a mercy thing for, for criminals. For, for people who, you know, unnecessarily kill. But then it goes on to say in this particular purport here that a shatri is giving protection both for the men and the animals. And we see the example of Maharaj Pariksit, how he gave protection to the cow and the bull. And in Vedic Shastras it says that the killing of a cow is equal to the killing of two men. This, it's more severe punishment for killing a cow than killing a, a human. So you can imagine the karma that's happening. That's why the world is such a mess now, because an unlimited amount of killing of babies in wombs, abortion, killing of animals. So you can, the 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 karmic toll on the society is heavy. Nobody can, nobody can be peaceful because of that. Yeah. Okay. How can we connect this that the kshatriyas they are giving protection, but they are sometimes also killing animals, or even we can see that Oh, you mean for tra for training? Well, in Vedic times, the Kshatriyas, in order to train, they would go out and kill, not cows. <laughs> Prabhupada said, not cows. They would kill <clears throat> like uh, deer or tigers for just to train like that. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, they eat meat. But that's not that they, you know, they are like avaricious meat eaters, you know. <laughs> but that, that's Vedic culture. <clears throat> Nowadays, if we have Kshatriyas in our society, <clears throat> we don't allow that. <laughs> you know, meat eating and for a devotee who's practicing Kshatriya service and in a society. That's only for for people in the secular world. That's allowed. But not any animal. Mm -hmm. But you don't have that, you don't have the Brahminical, what we say, guidance. So the Kshatriyas now, if there's any Kshatriyas, they just go wild because they're not controlled by the, by the Brahminical class. Kshatriyas are meant to work under the care of the Brahmins and not separate. So that concession is there for training. But Prabhupada, I was just listening to yesterday, Prabhupada was just talking about, he said, not any animal, but said, he said, tigers and deer, is what he said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Maharaj, a great point you said that there is no brahmanas to control the kshatriyas, but how can brahmanas today control the kshatriyas? Because kshatriyas are powerful, they are physical, I guess brahmanas have some pages. And There's no brahmanas. Where are you going to find brahmanas? <laughs> <clears throat> you might say that the priestly class is the brahmanas. So if you go to other tra religious traditions, you might consider some of them, they're actually br brahminical in some, in some sense of the word. But they don't follow all of the brahminical rules, they follow some of them. But they generally don't give advice to the leaders because the leaders don't want to take vice. 
That's why they created this law many years ago, separation of church and state. Mm. They made that law in America that the church and the state have to be separate. The, the church cannot influence leadership. So that means it becomes more degraded. <clears throat> so if a leader wants to have some kind of connection, it's an individual thing. But the state can't make any laws to govern, to help govern the society. I mean the church can't make any laws or even influence laws. Nowadays, it's the opposite. The churches go along with whatever the society, you know, saying, and you see, you'll see, they support killing, they support wars, or if they don't support, they remain silent. We're not meant to, we're not meant to remain silent. We're meant to speak out against this stuff. Otherwise, you know. I, I came across one video of one priest, and he was really angry and two, for two reasons. One, people were being forced to lose their job, lose their uh, uh, privileges for taking care of their needs if they refuse to accept, uh, you know, the vaccination or the lockdown. So he was good. He was really good. And at the same time, he was criticizing his colleagues for not speaking out also. He understood his, his role as a priest to protect. The Kshatriyas should do that, but he took the role of speaking out against the injustices in society which were forcing people to uh, lose their privileges because of an unlawful law. The law cannot force you into any medical care. Medicine is, I was just seeing, I just saw this just a few days ago, even yesterday, I think. No one can force any kind of medical treatment upon you. It's against the law. So this forced vaccination or forced punishment for refusing is all illegal. And now, lawyers, doctors, and other people are coming together and, and suing governments now. They're gonna, there's a suit against the United States of America now. Yeah. So it's, it's illegal to force people but this priest, well, he was just saying, you know, he, you know, we're not speaking out, but I'm speaking out. <laughs> okay, so these are we're we're lacking in that area. Therefore, if our society is to develop more, we really have to educate and train. Kshatriyas and Vaishyas. Otherwise, we won't be able to develop. <clears throat> okay, anything else before we end? Okay, thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.